Today I want to talk to you about reference tracks and especially show you three ways you can use to A, B your mix or production in Cubase. What is going on my friends? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. First of all, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Share and like this video if you love the video and also if you want to help me here on YouTube. Okay, let's talk about working with reference tracks. This is something that I use all the time. It's a wonderful tool when arranging a song, when recording a song, and especially when mixing and mastering a song. Using a reference track is something that I do all the time. And what I want to do in this video is to share with you three ways to set that up in Cubase. Two of the ways can be used in any DAW, and the third one, only on the pro version of Cubase. And this is actually the method that I'm using currently. That wasn't always the case. More on that later. So let's start by the first thing you can do to AB reference your mix. You can simply use a reference plugin, like the one that I used for years called Magic AB. And that is an awesome plugin to work with. Like I said, I worked with this one for several years and that was my go-to way to AB reference a mix or a production in Cubase. Now this plugin is actually not available anymore, unfortunately, but uh, Plugin Alliance has Ma a Matrix AB or something, I think that's the one, um, that is a very good one also. I never tried it myself, but it does basically the same thing um, as Magic AB. So what you get essentially with this type of plugin is the AB switch. This is the main feature here. Um, and you can go from uh, monitoring your main mix by making sure that the A is uh, on. And if you want to switch to your reference, you click on the B button and there you go. You're going to switch to your reference music. The cool thing about this type of plugin is that you can load several reference mixes um, all in the same plugin. Like on this one, you can go to, I think, a maximum of nine references if you want to. Uh, what I uh, like to do when I work with this plugin is to click on latch, make sure the latch is activated. So every time I click on play in Cubase, uh, my reference also is gonna start playing. And the advantage of working with this type of plugin is all the options that you get, like to loop a section of a song. And this is something that I do all the time where I only want to reference my mix with the verse, for example. And some other times I'm going to just reference my mix with the chorus of the reference track. This is very easy to set up with these plugins. Uh, like in this case, if I click on one, I have my, uh, my verse, I think, that is going on loop. So let's have a, just a quick listen. And if I click on two, I'm going to get to my chorus. Back to the verse. A is going to be my mix. And if I click back on B, I'm going to get back to the reference track. So very easy to use. And there's several options that you can work with within the plugin itself that is going to make your workflow faster. Now, the downside of using a plugin is that you have to spend money, you know, to get a plugin like this one. They don't do this one anymore, like I uh, told you earlier. But if you want to get a good one, Matrix AB is a good option from Plugin Alliance, and you can get this one at around $200. So it is a bit of an investment for this type of plugin, but it does work very well. Like I said earlier, I've been using this plugin for years, no complaints whatsoever. But I'm going to explain to you why I switched to one of the options that I'm going to share with you in the next few minutes. Okay, now the second thing that you can do, okay, the second way that you can use in Cubase, and this is going to be good for any other DAW or any versions of Cubase, is to simply create yourself a stereo audio channel where you're going to import your reference mix. That simple. And this is what I have here on top. And what I do in Cubase, though, is I activate, I make 
sure that my my divide track list is activated so I can always have a visual. I, I keep that reference track static at the top of my uh, my project window. So I always have a visual of that reference track. So for, it's going to be easier for me to solo the track every time I need to uh, listen to the reference track. So basically, I always keep this uh, channel muted and I route the output to my main stereo output. If we go into the uh, the mix console, uh, there's something with my main stereo out. And if you, uh, you've been following this channel for a while, you know the way I set up my stereo output. My main stereo bus, where I insert all of my processing plugins like compression and EQ, um, is going to be separated from the main output of Cubase. So I have, I, I created myself a stereo group, you know, a group channel track where I routed all of my tracks from my mix project in to. So this way I can use this stereo output as my main mix bus, basically, where I insert all of my plugins. And I keep the last stereo output of Cubase free of processing plugins. So this way I can route my reference channel straight into this free of plugin output. The advantage of doing it this way is that you won't need to bypass all the plugins every time you listen to your reference channel. Okay, so this is why I set that up this way. If you wanna know more about how to create your own mixing template, I have a free mini course on how to create the perfect mix template in Cubase, and that works for any other DAW. The link is down below. Very simple way, every time you wanna reference your track, you solo the reference channel. And at the same time, you can add other plugins, you know, so I can add a graphic analyzer on the same master output, which is not going to affect the sound. It's a reference plugin. Now, before I jump to the last one, there's something I want to add here that you can use when uh, working with a reference audio track in your Cubase. And this works for Cubase, actually. Uh, Cubase Artist and Cubase Pro, to be precise. You can work with track versions. And this is going to allow you to get a bit closer to what a plugin is going to offer you. So this way, you'll be able to uh, work with several mix reference tracks, okay? So this is something very useful. So you can create one track version for every reference mix you have. And something that I also did with this one um, is on my second reference, I have like the full version, and I also have one track version that is only the verse in loop. So if I want to reference my mix with the verse of the reference track, this is the one I'm going to select. And same for the chorus. I set that up also for the chorus. So on this track version, I only have the chorus, uh, which is also very, very practical. So this is the way I set that up. I use track versions to do so. The downside, though, is that it's going to take you some time to set that up. But if you're using the same mix reference tracks, you know, over and over again, you can actually import that track or just add that this track to your mix template and import it on any sessions that you want. I actually talked about importing a track from a project on one of my last video that I'm going to link right here on top. And this is a very practical way to set that up once and use it on all your mixes if you want. To. Now let's jump on the last way you can AB reference your mix in Cubase Pro this time. And I'm saying Pro because we are going to work with the control room. And this is something that I made a video on two years ago, uh, but it's not a method that I was using at the time because I was using the plugin and the plugin served me well. And I didn't find it very appealing at first to use the control room until recently. And I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. So first, how you can set that up. Okay. I'm going to go back to my reference channel. I'm going to route this to no bus. I don't want this channel to go anywhere. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to open the, um, the audio connections window and click on control room. And I'm going to make sure that I have a queue that is already set up. So if you don't have any, you can just create add channel and add queue. Now this queue doesn't need to be routed anywhere. 
Now it's routed to not connected. So it doesn't matter what, uh, where you connect this one. In my case, it's going nowhere. That's going to be okay. Then on the control room side, uh, let's go to the main part of the control room. I have my Q1 right here on top. Now I'm going to make sure that the source is set up to Q. And this is something that is done by default anyways. Um, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to make sure I have my reference track selected. I'm going to click on the left zone. I'm going to look for Q. I don't see it. So I'm going to click on setup and I'm going to make sure that Q make a Q sends is active. And then I'm going to have my Q send and I'm going to make sure that I'm sending the signal on Q1. And if I click on play, Oh, I forgot to unmute the channel. So I need to keep my reference track on muted. Now I have some signal coming into my Q mix one. Now I'm good to go. What I need to do next is to check at the bottom of the mix console where I have the mix source uh, and also C1, which is my reference track, and I can switch between the two. Now the cool thing is that you can use some inserts also in the control room. So my, you know what I was talking about, my, uh, uh, my span graphic analyzer plugin, I have a version right here down, down in the, uh, the insert of the main, the main section of the control room. And this way I can use my graphic analyzer to analyze my mix. Now, this is something very appealing as far as I'm concerned. And the fact that you can create yourself a key command to switch from the source mix to the source Q mix is something that got me sold on working with this method. And to do so is very simple. You click on edit, you go down to key commands and you'll see it. It's going to be under, uh, under control room. So let's go up to control room, or you can just simply search for it. And it's going to be called select control room source. And I set myself a, uh, a key command. It's, there's none selected by default. You're going to have to create one yourself. And uh, I have uh, the key of my choice. So this way I can uh, click my shortcut to get from my main mix to my reference track. Like for me, that that does it, you know? So there's no need for me to use a plugin at this point. Using a shortcut, you know, a key command to switch from the mix to the reference mix, you know, is something that I just love to do. Um, that increases my workflow big time. There you go, my friends. This is how you can A-B reference your mix in Cubase and other DAWs. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like this video. Also, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, leave your questions and comments down below. Actually, I have a question for you. Which of those three methods do you like to use on your side? Do you like to work with a reference plugin? If so, which one do you work with? Which one do you recommend? And why do you prefer working with a plugin opposed to work with Cubase and also the other way around. Why do you prefer working with Cubase rather than working with a reference plugin? Let me know down in the comment section. All right, my friends, take care and until next time, see you.